Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Okay, so what, 10 minutes maybe? You want me back? Okay. If you don't see me in here, I should be up in the front rows. If I'm not there, I'll be in the blue, blue clinic. Okay. And if you don't want to leave Eddie, just page me, okay? And I'll know that you're here, he's 218. Doing, he's doing good. Okay. Be right there. I've got one stop before you. And I'll be right back. Why, well, sure. The one with the nice, healthy teeth. What we're doing today is... Uh, Preparing the development on 29, that DO inlay with the okay. um, option of a slicer, and that's what I'd like you to comment on now. I, I started the occlusal portion and have started the proximal as well, but I'm not sure whether we should go to a slice, increase a little bit of retention there. Number 29, huh? 29, yeah. Okay. I just took the temporary off of 31 to clean it up. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you really don't need a slice on there. Uh, okay. We can flare things out. I put myself, I widen this key out. Okay, just come. Or this dovetail out just a little bit more. Just more to, to the buckle? Uh, yeah, just to give myself a little bit more metal in there. Yeah. Well, I, mm -hmm. I wanted to leave it so we could figure out which direction to um, increase it the most. I think probably the buckle two thirds and the lingua one third maybe. Mm hmm. Yeah, good. Oh, also, a uh, comment on the uh, temporary, which will dictate a little, increasing a little occlusal reduction on the um, mesiolingual aspect as well as the distal buckle. She burned through on the, it's been two weeks. Can you bite together, please? I think it's probably uh, balancing, working and balancing, actually. That's yeah, I'd get myself some additional a room. More on. depth there, mm, yeah. Right. Okay, open again, please. Thank you. Good. And then I'm going to sink uh, that pinhole right where you're at. Okay. There. Comments on the um, proximal of the of 29. Do you want me to just increase the flare on that? A little bit. Okay. That's about all. Deepen the uh, axial mm -hmm. a little bit. And I wouldn't do anything about the occlusal there at all. That'll give us a little internal re retention. Yeah. Hard. Leave the occlusal on on 31, you mean? Put a little dical in it? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't even bother. You, yeah, you want a little dical. Run around burr in here a little bit. It feels a little bit suspect. Oh, yeah, suspect. for uh, soft. Yeah. Then, okay. Right, yeah. What do you think about the distal of 31, though? Mm -hmm. Fine. Mm -hmm. I might drop it just a little bit underneath the soft tissue, just give myself a, a little bit more a little length. Grab. Right, and that's about it. And with that okay. pin on there, why? Shouldn't have any problems at all. Okay. Why should it have been like that? It seems like if you've got a good seal oh, yeah, yeah. and that canal is, is made for that point, that doesn't seem like there's anywhere that for that yeah. thing to bend. Or does it just kind of accordion in on itself? It, you're usually pushing against your apical stop, okay? And so that it is giving, uh, there is some space in there, mm -hmm. okay? So, because remember, even though it's a single cone technique, you there is space between the wall and the cone itself that's being filled in with sealer. Depending on, on the discrepancy between that the cone and the wall, it will have obviously more room the more discrepancy there is. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is not much, not much to be significant. What I think it was doing is just bending against your apical seal or mm -hmm. apical stop, and that's what was causing it. Okay. okay, and just taking it in and out and readjusting your 
fit and what have you. Okay. How about the x-rays? Let's take a quick peek there and then we can get them back in. <clears throat> Why don't you kind of walk me through it? Let's uh, take a peek at the interesting findings here. Well, he's got, he's has some mild periodontitis. Mm -hmm. Or anteriors are affected. Some of the areas in the posterior crest of around the lone standing lowers. Mm -hmm. You can see he's got some traumatic occlusion, kind of a dished out appearance to the bone. Mm -hmm. Most of those. He's got typical mesial tilt that would tend to mean he's got balancing working interferences, which he does. Um, Run that one by me again. Well, it's just that when I usually see this kind of situation, and when I see this in the bite wings where he's mm -hmm. got a CO, usually nine times out of ten that I've noticed, he's got some, either a working or a balancing interference, because as those teeth extrude, they seem to come in lingually. Okay, in other words, when the mesial side goes down, the distal part's kicking up in the air, and yeah. you're talking about hanging up in this corner back here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm with you. Is that normal for the for the alveolar ridge to be as rolled as, as prominent as it is here on 47? It appears to me, I mean, so much more significant compared this part or mm -hmm. this part. Um, I'm this row here, right? Uh huh. That, to a certain degree, is a response to the um, margin. Okay. Is, could it also be like? It's looking at the two, looking at 45 and looking at 47, and you can see where 46 was, so there's, it's actually a shell out where you lose a lot of your alveolar ridge there. Well, now that has to do with how, why was this tooth lost? Decay? Decay. Okay. That has to do with how much bone was lost with the tooth. Okay. Right? Because mm -hmm. if... The more is lost when you take out the tooth or from the decay. That's right. Mm -hmm. We have found over the years that the left-handed student is uh, more independent, more stubborn, but probably the better achiever in dental classes in the past. No kidding. Yeah. Thank you. You've Prob made up for your prob age story. Pro uh, <laughs> probably you, 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 you had to you know, overcome the right-handed world, and that's why you... <laughs> you you know, have to work harder to, to get anywhere. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> what did we lose, though? You didn't pick an easy one here, Steve. Okay, Bob, what do you got? Okay. Do you remember first, John, what the length was on the distal canal? I believe it was 22. Okay. It was. Right. That'll give us a pretty good idea mm -hmm. of what we'd like to have as far as the amount of reduction, and we won't make any mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, we've only got four or five minutes invested in it. Mm -hmm. And I usually do this whenever I have any question of draw at all. If I'm doing a relatively long bridge, I'll encourage a student to go ahead and take a gel trade impression. And it's just a snap impression, but it gives you an opportunity not only to check the draw out of the mouth on a surveyor, but it also, you know, you get a chance to sort of critique the preparations out of the mouth, and it gives you a little better idea where they should be touched up. If we first uh, treatment plan to do a chamfer down there. Do you think mm -hmm. it'd be better to do a shoulder well, since, your, since it's subgingival? Your uh, your shoulder. Uh, on a on a lower is okay because you can you can leave a little gold collar and mm -hmm. the bevel will do that. If you're gonna if you're gonna hide all the porcelain like you might do in an upper one, then you don't want you don't want uh, usually to do a, a bevel because the porcelain has to go over the thin gold bevel. Right. And it's gonna it's gonna distort. It's gonna mm -hmm. it's gonna be misshapen. So on on one where you want to take the porcelain all the way subgingually, do your chamfer. Okay? Right because you get the, the chance to put the porcelain down there without restoring. On a lower that doesn't show, now her lip doesn't show this. Mm -hmm. Count to 10 for me real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But she's, <laughs> she's an net designer there. We could have her whistle if she wouldn't do that. <laughs> but she doesn't show this part, so we can get a, a small gold collar, which would be the, de the height of your bevel. Okay. And then make your shoulder follow the curvature of the gum line. 
Okay, not straight across. Just just shoulder the, the preparation at okay, the gum line. It's, but but the shoulder should be in tooth tissue, right? Oh yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. but oh, yeah. at the gum line it's still composite, so I'm gonna have to go subgingival to make it. But your bevel your bevel will extend oh. you beyond there. So. Oh, okay. Okay. How did you like working with the Prisma? Did you have any trouble putting the strip over and bringing in the light? Too much excess, I think, so I had to take some off the window. But not bad. Uh, if you can give anesthesia so the patient doesn't realize they're getting anesthesia, well, that's a tremendous practice builder because people don't like to be stuck with needles. I don't, you don't. Uh, and uh, I'd like to show you a couple of things that you can do that takes the patient, patient's mind off of having the injection. Okay. Now, first of all, give me a two-by-two two gauze. So, is there anything else? No. He's not sensitive to percussion, so you can't say acute apical periodontitis. Yes, pulpal necrosis is the most important diagnosis, but you need to know that secondary one, too, so that you know there was an area present there. If you were to call me up on the phone and just to tell me this, I'd be asking you all these questions. And if you called up and said, uh, I need help on this particular tooth, I've got a tooth that says pulpal necrosis and chronic apical periodontitis, in those sh few short words, you've told me the whole picture right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, provided you haven't left anything out. Right. So what you've got is fine, uh, other than that uh, one omission. And uh, you had the most important one there. Now, um, I made trays with the anticipation of uh, possibility of getting an impression, but I don't know whether by the time... You mean a possibility? Hmm? Good work? <laughs> you betcha. I always count on the... <laughs> Absolutely. An Absolutely. Uh, oh, my goodness, you're going to get a get an impression today. And let's use uh, some President. Have you ever used a vinyl polysloxin? No. Okay. The only thing different is we like to put a few additional retentive... Uh, holes in there, so just take a round burr okay. and cut a few holes around here. Okay. I think you'll like it. It's a very, very accurate material. The only thing about it is it mixes a little bit quicker, but uh, you got a, a lovely young lady here helping you, so you shouldn't have any yeah. problems. And there's no reason why you can't get the impression the first time. Okay? Sounds good. One more thing that I can tell you that it makes it very, very nice if you have cuspid guidance is back in the molar region, when you come to make bridges and crowns and so on, you don't have to be anywhere near as careful on guidances and carving them up as you would. Right. If you had group function, you've got to spend much more time, don't you see? So that's a, there's a real nice advantage to it if people have it. And when you start evaluating patients that are coming into your office, this is one of the things that you want to take into consideration, is how much time you, might you have to spend in doing the treatment on this individual. Don't you see? If they've got a cup of guidance, then you're not going to have to spend anywhere near as time. Right. Usually. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, I put a little block out of peripheral wax under that. Okay. Okay. You should, since, you've, since you have uh, done this before, you should be able to go ahead tissue packet and just show me an impression. Okay. Is there enough distal lingual cusp in this area to go ahead and get a pin in here? I don't think so. You don't think so? All right, then we'll stick with just one pin up here. So just take half round burr and put a little dimple in there so that the twist drill doesn't skate around right. and just run it down there uh, two and a half, three millimeters. Do you have some soap? 
Can I talk with you for a minute? Did you have soap when you started? Have I washed my hands yet? Yeah. In my operatory, yeah. But yeah. not since I came over here. Okay, because you touched a lot of different things, and it would, and different faculty members might think you didn't wash your hands. So always have your soap out, because that would be a, a fairly accurate representation that we did that kind of stuff, okay? We have some soap. In front, in front of patient, I didn't want to tell you that this is not a good view for a professional man, okay? And that's something that you should do. And the mirror and everything you need should be should ready, be ready. ready before. So I didn't want to discuss over that. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, have you done all these down here too? E not that last one over there. And yeah, all those. Mm -hmm. They look pretty nice. They've been feeling pretty pretty mm -hmm. good? Yeah. <laughs> she's been here long enough. Well, she's probably trying to get tenure. <laughs> okay. You two are all set to go. There's no reason why we can't gonna get that all done today. We'd like to see a Roberta, but I know that you just soon not to come back any more often than it's necessary, would you? Well, she's oh, you don't have to agree with me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're gonna but don't say. forget, we'll get her back for the other two units. Well, that's true, too. Okay. Okay, Jenny, I'm gonna have you open up. Can you open real big for me? That's a boy super. Then take a good look at that palate and take a good look at the throat. He looks pretty good. Is that tooth uh, sensitive to you, Carl? No. <laughs> Let me see the polish. Okay. Still numb? Did that work? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. You can probably leave this out till you get that done. She'd be a little more comfortable. There's no need to keep it uh, dry and isolated. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. We can still move to the cuspid if, if that one's lost. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> you know, when they asked me when I had them clean last, mm -hmm. he didn't clean them like you all do. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yep. By any means. Yeah. You'll find that. Uh, have you turned your head down? There you go. You'll find that uh, what's happened. You see, the reason we're struggling through this is because we're reaching areas probably where very few people have ever gotten to. The unfortunate thing, though, is the bacteria can get there. So. Although in this initial kind of debridement situation, the patient goes through several hours of this kind of cleaning, but if you keep your teeth clean and you have your teeth cleaned on a regular basis with someone using these kinds of instruments, you'll never have to go through this again because it can't build up that fast. It's actually mineralizing on your teeth. Uh, at this point in time, we have to make a judgment as to can we do anything uh, to make her feel better right now. And uh, I think it's kind of up to you at this point. Well, look, I'll tell you, if you will tell me what to take, I, I'm going away tomorrow. Uh-huh. I'm going to next Friday. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll be in Stream City, so uh, what could I buy at the local drugstore to help it if it gets really bad? We will give you something so that you can get that and take it with you, and we'll just let some more time go by so we can find out what's going on with this tooth, okay? Yeah, I'll be fine, and then I'll keep a count on um, be more mentally alert of when it happens. Okay, very good. So I think you're in business. That looks really good. I'd let our you know, patient take another good look at it. It's one of those situations we have you look a lot now and give us heck now because it's real easy to make subtle changes. Once we get it all in plastic, it gets real hard to make the changes, and so. I just, I never complained about <laughs> I just took them and they were. Yeah, last time. exactly. Well, I guess.
guess I could do something constructive. <laughs> yeah. okay. Haven't done this in a long time, but you know. All right. I need to put another in too. my safety glasses and we'll be all set. Make a pardon? I'm going to need a rough diamond or a 171 hour to start rough preparing this. I she has one in there. Well, you know, I said I'd suction the water. I mean, you know, I, mean, I didn't say I'd chain birch water. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's what it fits it. Where do you want me to go? Uh, to this way. Okay. How's that? Oh, there's this side right there. Whenever you're baking porcelain to a margin is when you need the axillate and slant. Okay? All right. Yeah. Did I over-explain that? No, I think okay. that helps get it straight. Um, he has a, uh, when I tried to take this up the first time, this little loop that he has. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot about that. Do you have something you can cut wire with? Uh, no, I can borrow one, though. I can get a wire cutter. Okay, why don't you go ahead and you to get, the, yeah, get the profi angle. I'll have to show you, I think, how to take that ligature out. Okay. It's just on that one side. Okay. Have you filled out one of these? Yeah, I have. I know, I interrupted you. Okay, for instance, in my mouth, I'm a Bruxer. Okay. Take a look at that. You see that? Yeah. Now, as I go laterally, you know, in an eccentric motion, I don't open posteriorly at all. Everything yeah. you look stays. Like you got more. Uh, you have a light cut the guy. Exactly. You, know, uh, you take a look at how badly that's ground down. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, so on my mouth, if you if you're going to be doing a porcelain restoration on a mandibular by or a maxillary by. You're going to want to reduce that buckle cusp a little bit more in my mouth than you would say in, in somebody that has a very steep cuspid disclusion where you know the minute they go this way, posteriorly they're opening. So you've got to really be able to, you know, beforehand know what your patient has. I've made every mistake you can make at least twice. And one of them to make is to, do, to concentrate at the time that you, you take the impression and the record taking on just getting it done and not figuring it out. Well, Eric, you're, you're uh, learning to uh, some, cut some pretty nice preps. <laughs> That's good. Thanks. Yeah. That's right, and you may want to use a little, a little smaller burr than that also. That's a fairly large burr. You may want to step down a burr size or two so you can clean that a little bit more carefully. Hate to see you knock out all your liner in the process, <laughs> no too. Can I have you say 55 for me? 44? That's good. She's probably done that about 600 yeah. times for me. What did you do that for? <laughs> really? Because the instructor's going to do it when he comes around, right? Correct. You know, when I took that impression the second time, yep. I had a hunch. You know, like, when you have a feeling about things, you know? And I just, we just went in and took the impression and I said, you know, I just said to myself, I said, I'm not going to have shrimp fish in there and this is going to show. Sometimes you've got to follow your... Well, a good thing to do next time is before we take it is take a little calginate before you even do anything. You know exactly where the tissue is and you'll be able to see if it really shrinks up or not. 
So sometimes I think that I take off enough of the tooth and then I realize I don't. And it wasn't as much shrinkage of the tissue, it was as much as me not preparing it. Or other times it's the other way around. Yeah. Before you design the appliance, before you figure out what, what to do, before you figure out how much it's going to cost, before you figure out how, much, how long it's going to take, you'd like to have it all figured out. Yeah. So that it's real disappointing. And it's happened to me a number of times. Okay, that looks fine. And you've got a chamfer finish line or a modified thereof and a, and a lingual aspect. Okay, good. Well, that should be very nice. It should work out just fine for us. try our evaluation here. Finish walls and margins is what we were kind of just working, working on, wasn't on. it? I thought that Just a little roughness. Um, I put it in between. Yeah, I would have put it in S, okay? It, it's good, uh, and that was the main area. Your internal definition is nice. You got nice square corners up here, okay? Retention feels quite good. Yeah, I'd keep it right at the top, right in an arc. That's good there. And external, well, I've kind of put, I thought the lines, they didn't diverge like I would like them to. And I, you know, I figured uh -huh. if I diverged them a little more, they didn't get too wide. Yeah, no, I would hold with the tooth you've got. It's relatively straight. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is depth-wise, going actually, if you look at your DEJ, you had to be there because of the thickness of the enamel for your uh, retentive group. And so I'd put it right at the top. That's a nice prep. And you kept your axial wall nice and square right along with it, so you're in good shape there. Okay, that's a cap check. And then go ahead and get your matrix on, and we're ready to go with that, okay? Okay, good. And how deep is our pinhole here? Uh, probably two and a half millimeters. Yep, at least. That look good? Looks great. I checked on the x-ray, it looked like it was, the bulb was mostly mm -hmm. buckling low oriented, so I wasn't too worried about okay, it. Okay, fine. The only other thing I'd like you to do is just to soften this up okay. just a little bit, and then we should be in business. The main question I had was on the was on the bevel, you know, for the shoulder. I'm not sure really if I'm doing that right or if it's wide enough. Or I use the 7901 to go around. I, I with think that. that's probably one of the better ones to use because it, it does a couple of things for you. It it not only uh, creates a nice bevel, okay, but because it's a multi-fluted burr, it also makes a very smooth, nice finish to uh -huh. the, whole, the whole bevel. <clears throat> um, I like your shoulder a lot. And I like your occlusal reduction. Well-defined, readily seen finish line. I like the way you faded your shoulder out on the distal and joined it quite nicely. Um, Is that enough occlusal reduction? Because I remember you said that's a really critical, really critical point. Especially the uh, the buckle cusp. Right. Because on the maxillary device, we hood that cusp in porcelain, so you need just a little extra room. I suggest to you that you have enough. Uh, you did a very good job, so I'm going to give you the highest available grade. Well, thank you. Because it was not only the denture was built good, but the adjustment very good. You take the area very good, and step by step you went very clear, and you were a very organized, good All right. thank student. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if you want to push that, that wedge anymore in in the canine or if that's sufficient. 
As long as we don't get the explorer to penetrate between the matrix and the enamel margin, you've done everything you need to do. Okay. You've done a nice job on that. Okay. Very nice. Promise me that when you get to clinic, you'll do them this good. Okay? It's I so important. Of, I spent so much time on that one. Uh, if you guys come out of here with nothing other than Knight said good temporaries, I'll be pleased. Please, okay? It's incredibly important because you know, you're dealing with the settings. And if you put a temporary in there that is going to beat the living daylights out of the soft tissue or the opposing occlusion or the tooth itself, you've just destroyed everything. So temporaries are important. So I think these look really good. When she smiles a little bigger, I like that too because it exposes more tooth. It doesn't get way up on the yeah. gum so we don't get a real extra gummy appearance when she smiles even big. No, I think that looks like a million bucks, you know. Take that to the bank. Okay, that's great. That's fine. Super. Charlie, here, don't take a look at those two while you're... This is uh, mm, this fine. complex case we've gotten. Sure. No, these pins buried, you know, about three millimeters yeah, there. Yeah, them deep enough. And a sinking them pin there. Yeah. You're definitely right about the bone when you first look, but you, there's a couple little caries. Look here. Caries? That little See how it's leaning into that space? Yeah. So, so what you've done on this door model is just perfect. It's straightened it up, yeah. actually. Yeah, you straightened it up so it'll give... Yeah, that that's right. Okay. That's right. Now, I want to keep my margin super gingival as possible, right? Yeah, right. Now the other thing, uh, could you give me a pencil? Mm -hmm. On this model here, uh, I see just one thing I'd like you to change. All right. Hang on to that. And it's the, the line of draw of uh, the, the boxes. I'd like it to be more straight up and down, and I want it to be, the, the box to be right over the ridge. I'm drawing a line right on All the right. ridge. And if we could make the boxes go straight up and down over the ridge there, and this one back here is leaning a little bit in this direction, mm -hmm. you see? So we yeah. want to just straighten that up a little bit. Okay. The carving turned out pretty well. Kept a nice oblique ridge. It's nice. slight amount of hypercritical some margination right there, okay? Yeah. Yeah. The rest of you did excellent on. Take your rubber dam off, check occlusion, get your paperwork all ready, and then let me check it. Okay. So the next time he does that, I want you to grade him. <laughs> yeah. Okay? No, 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 seriously, because yeah. this is good for him, because uh -huh. he has to... Oh, you know, yes, I know. And if he can do that, now, same thing with a block. Was there a little bubble in the casting there, or did it just kind of flick off when you were polishing it? I have no idea. Because with that in that position, you're right there, you'd have a fairly large gap. Mm -hmm. The cement wouldn't be durable enough to hold right at that point. The disc part we could correct, but this we wouldn't be able to correct. Were there... Let's see how this die looks. See, let me have the Explorer back. See, we still have excess at the, the distal clinically. So it means that the die has some discrepancy right at that corner. Do you have to have another tray? Because with this opening that you have here, we wouldn't be able to cement it in that area. 
And if this was a little bit more accurate here, we could probably go with this die again. But then you might have to spend that much time again trying to get your margins down. It'd be better, I would say, go ahead and take another impression, put your temporary on, and, uh, and do it that way. Okay? If it wasn't for this, we could probably work the distal and we'd be all right. Okay? It's both. Okay. It is both. Does she have any symptomology there? No, she doesn't complain of any pain. Every once in a while she does have some food entrapment in there, though. Well, she is really approaching the point that you must think about doing something as far as recontouring it. Okay. Open for me just a little wider. I just touched it and look at the amount of hemorrhage that I'm getting. That's hard. Yeah. She's packing food in it. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you, that was from the most distal aspect. Of That's it. right. Okay. That's I didn't right. Back there. The, the lingual aspect, I didn't have any hemorrhaging at all. Okay. There, is a, there is a great deal of inflammation right in here. Yeah, okay. I can just touch it and I get I spontaneous hemorrhage. Okay, okay I'd, I'd like you to enhance your bevel right around in this corner here a little bit more. As it's, uh, it'd be very, very difficult. Your finish line is down here, right? Right. Okay. You sort of come up with sort of a, a little roller coaster effect right here. In other words, what it, what it looks like there is we're sort of coming up with our shoulder and then you sort of make a very abrupt dip mm -hmm. back to the distal aspect here like this. So what I'd like, what might be worthwhile is just softening this off, run the shoulder through here just a little bit like that and then carry that bevel through like that and I think you'll find it a heck of a lot better preparation. It'll make, it'll make you know, a lot easier on a technician. Okay. Both um, mesial and distal? No. Just, the, just, just on this the mesial. mesial. Uh -huh. okay. Right, just right in this one corner. The rest of it looks... Well, you might enhance this bevel just a little bit more in a distal there too, right in this corner. It'll make it, it'll make it a lot easier mm -hmm. for the technician to finish the gold and, you know, okay, and then just, it's... Just yeah. go ahead and take like... Yeah, a, I uh, just, I just, well, you know, it's... Right in his corner. See how, uh, she, how yes, he's got a sure. little spicule? You want to make it so that you've got all your margins completely redefined so you know where they are, that you don't have any flash, because that'll act as a plaque retention area. All right, now let's check with our mirror and explore, and we should be in pretty good shape. Okay, now take a look with the mirror. You should be able to see your margin at the gingival pretty well delineated. See that? And then you can verify that you've got it closed. That feels real nice. I did a nice job there. Okay, go ahead. Do everything again to the other one, all right? Looks fine. Quadrant. Okay, question number four. four. And let me point out the, that one spot right now. Okay, okay it's the mesial lingual 32. Okay, now we're on quadrant four. 42. <laughs> Were you working with her, with her laying flat? Now remember, on the mandibular, this is the way she should be. Mm -hmm. well, I got some pretty good leverage being at 12 o'clock with that. Well, mm -hmm. you probably just were lucky. <laughs> but you'll find, because notice how I'm going to check her. I'm going to have her bring her head over, and I'm going to be at 11 o'clock position, mm -hmm. and I'm going to come from right here. Take the mirror and I'm going to move. 
Mm -hmm. We just take that through and just, what, have you got a finishing burn on there by any chance? No, I don't. I've got them over here. Mm. Could we have the diamonds, please? Sure. Thank you. Oh, okay. I've got a line of finishing for this, show, my friend. Is that a finishing burn? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. If you leave just one little area of decay, that's mm -hmm. all it would take. Mm -hmm. And then once you put the, the melon back in and the crown on top, mm -hmm. you're going to have a very difficult time uh, identifying it using later mm -hmm. Now, uh, a good way of uh, opening up that distal contact uh, is to not go in and just make a slice with a diamond. Right. Because when you do that, you stand a chance of cutting up this other tooth here. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea to do, make your MOD staple first, okay? okay? And open up this box. All right. And once you've opened the box up, then all you need to do is take the diamond and open up that little bit on the lingual and a little bit on the buckle. Okay. And you don't uh, scarf up this adjacent tooth. Let okay? me ask you this, though. If I'm going to do a protective cusp inlay there, does it matter? Does that change uh, my uh, approach? On this, on this yes, tooth back I here? Yes, I might be doing a protective cusp inlay there. Would you still rather that I approached I it that oh, way? Oh, yeah, I still, okay, I, because, I will. because that way you, you can develop the kind of the technique to okay. do that. You know? Okay. I try it that way so you can see All how right. it feels to do that. Okay, good. MOD, and then you just, it's very easy to wipe that out. Okay. That way, you see, and also when you go in without seeing where you're going, you stand a chance of making a shoulder down the lingual and on the cervical, okay? But if you, if you make your yep. box, you know exactly where you're going. Okay. okay? That sounds good. We'll do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Thank you, Dr. Lord. You, you might block out, this is tied together here, this this crown and the, into that dovetail there on the tooth behind. Isn't there a, there's a, the contact is tied together? Well, no, this, this comes off. Oh, you mean uh, underneath? Well, uh, you're going to, that's going to be left on when you take the impression, right? Yeah. Okay, but so the silicone's going to get underneath it okay. and pull the whole thing out. Okay. So you need to put a little block out wax or something under there or else it's going to just rip it right out. Okay. You hear that little tinky? Yeah, I do. Now, I, I'm not sure that that is calculus yet, and I'll tell you why. Because... It is a situation where I feel it only going down and not coming up. So that could be CEJ, yeah. prominent CEJs, which we know are definitely prominent in her mouth. In fact, that's what that is. That is where the enamel comes in, and there may be even a dentin section in there, and then we pick up the cementum that comes back down. Okay. So that's probably why we've had some difficulty detecting calculus in her mouth. But now, see, I have an idea of where that path is of the main canal, mm -hmm. what direction it's going in, so that when I do go to a rotary instrument, I won't have to be concerned about trying to locate the direction of the canal with that burr, because that's where you run into dangers of perforation and uh, misguidance outside the main aspect of the canal. Mm -hmm. So you're all set, and you're going to take it to what size? Um, well, originally I thought 40. Um, okay. Now, I'm not sure. I know it's, I would rather stick with a gutta percha than a um, silver okay. point on that. So I think that would be a... I think that would be fine. What I would like you to do, though, is uh, let me know if you're having any difficulty getting up to a 40. You might only be able to get to a 30. Notice that there is a curve on the canal, and any time you've got that kind of curve, you need to put, put a pretty good curve on your file. If you don't, what will happen is the file will tend to straighten out, and what you do is you start walking right out this way, and pretty soon right you'll have a preparation that looks like that. Uh, you'll be getting close to perforating, in addition to doing that, you won't be able to get your master cone to have any tug back. Okay. Okay, so there are a lot of reasons you want to be careful on that. So a nice curve on all your files. If you're having troubles, let me know, okay? Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. No.
When you're taking these off then, is there any, do you usually edge it up? Yeah, tease it up with your thumb off of there first, mm -hmm. okay? Don't pull it by this because you'll you torque your right. yeah. Now, did you plus your contact? It's, it doesn't have a contact, it's an open contact. Oh, okay, then you're all set. Right. You know, the only thing is I look at it, can you see a wrinkle, especially on the one side right where you're right screwed? Right where the screw is. I'd take a hot PK Thomas and just very lightly blend that. Okay. Because otherwise when you go to polish it, you've got a wrinkle across there, you've got to try and polish okay. out. Okay. That's that would be my only comment. Okay? That but tease it up first. Okay. Don't don't pull it off. Okay. Okay, now for this one you'll need a little bit of a taper. You'll have to be able to look down from this end and pretty much see your finish line all the way around. The reason being that you're going to pour stone around this. Oh. And then you'll have to remove it. And if you don't have the base tapered, you won't be able to get your die out. So that's going to be key just like it was poured on the stone. Exactly. Okay, so you need your, your taper tapered exactly like your post. Okay? Um, and don't forget, you'll also need some kind of anti-rotational lock, either like a number six round burr, or add a little bit of Duralay, a, a bubble of Duralay, okay? Just some kind of a positive key, all right? Check your proximal. If it's too tight, a way you can determine where to take it off is put floss on it. Have somebody come over and help hold the casting while you floss it. Find out if it's the mesial or the distal. Okay, so you don't blindly just take some off and say, oh, gee, it was the mesial. Okay, find out which one it is. Another thing you can do is take a, a, a regular carbon-type pencil, alcohol it off, and then mark, like in this case, on the mesial of uh, 26 and then on the, the distal of the other by, and then it'll leave a marking of graphite, and then where the contact is a little bit too great at the interproximal, it'll leave a deposit of graphite. Then you can take it off, zzz, try it again. So you know exactly where to take it off, so you aren't blindly going in there saying, well, trial and error. What you need to do is take your explore and just explore these areas, and let's just concentrate on this quadrant with the things that we have yeah, been going through up here. And I think you're going to you're going to see a big difference. Today is going to be a stark realization into what okay. debridement is all about. <laughs> okay, sir. So just, uh, why don't you just concentrate on quadrants four for right now. Okay. Go ahead, get your base in today, and if, even if we just get the base in, ready to pack, that's fine for today, too. Okay, well, um, I think I'll get Okay. Now, how are we doing here? I got two temporaries. I'm working, I almost got the one on the uh, cuspid done. I could probably work on that. Okay, and how are you gonna, coming with your post and core? I haven't really started yet. I'd like to kind of get going on that, get the dural in my rubber base. Okay, so I can get, get the, that done. Get the bonnet done, or I mean the, the, the die done. Yeah, this is critical. You gotta have the die done today. Right. Okay? Okay. And if you want to start working on your temporaries, then we'll work on the post and court. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. You betcha. Start watching and budgeting your time. Right. <clears throat> what I like to do in first doing a post prep is to use a heated uh, number three spreader, as you see. <laughs> This one's been used for that purpose many, many times, but that's the only thing that we use it for. Mm -hmm. So that in doing this, we're using an instrument that's non-rotary to give us a guide first of the direction of the path of the canal uh, so that we have less danger of perforation from mm -hmm. a rotary instrument, okay? So what we 
do is try to estimate how far, how much gutta percha we want to remove. And in a canal like this, you want to leave at least five millimeters of gutta percha at the apex to maintain a seal, mm -hmm. okay? So we don't want to re remove any more than 17 millimeters of gutta percha, okay? Do you have a finger ruler somewhere? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is kind of eyeball on my spreader here where 17 millimeters is, and it's probably about two-thirds of the way up the shaft of the spreader. So keep that in mind, and then what you do is just heat your, your spreader till it's cherry red, and then carry it and move up and down in the canal to start removing the gutta percha. It's not in one quick sweep that you try and get the whole 17 millimeters. No. It usually, when you do this immediately following the gutta percha filling, then the gutta percha will come out relatively quickly and easily. Uh, later on, it usually takes a couple times, three, four times to, to get the uh, desired length. Okay, why don't you go ahead and take it off and uh, you want to clean up the band really good, get the plaque off the inside, scale any cement off the teeth, of course, so we don't, you know, we don't want to cement, new cement down over old cement. Run a profi cup and polishing paste all over that tooth and you've got your isolation stuff, the cement, the scalers, and we'll go ahead and re-cement it. And why don't you holler kind of when you're done? Either page me. You can use a mosquito hemostat and lift it off that way. One of these little locking ones that you can place on the temporary. It's acrylic temporary, isn't it? And then wiggle it and take it off that way. I should extend with the Fisher burr? No, I go round burr. I go labially with the round burr a little further before I. Okay, go labially. I mean, just deepen the penetration. Yeah, sure, deepen the penetration. And then extension and size of cervically. Uh, that's going to be more with the Fisher burr, right? Okay. Yeah. 55 easy? Mm -hmm. No, 56. 55 is break too easy. 55 may be only in a mandibular first buy, and that's only if you're shaky and you're going to have a wide hole. Okay, okay. so and 56. That would be at high speed still? Yeah, I'd square it up a little bit with high speed and then very quickly get over to the slow speed. Okay, as soon as I start approaching the uh, proximal area, I mean, the adjacent to, I should use the slow speed there? Or? Mm, yeah, basically. Um, Pass or two, and then get to your slow speed because you're going to find that that's a very small prep. It will get large on you very quickly. If you got, uh, yeah, cotton rolls are okay. Okay, two is, three is probably enough. Slide ejector, you look, yeah, you're all set. Okay, you're going to sit down, right? Okay. Now, if you're working alone, this is pretty hard to do by yourself. Usually if you're working alone, if you had to do this, it'd be, it'd be nice to have a piece of scotch tape on here so you wouldn't slobber the cement all over the place. And then, you know, when you turn around here, the right. cement's not running all out. But with an assistant, you usually don't. Okay. Now, something real quick since I'm looking at it. I know Operative wants you to tie floss on there. Now, if you get that caught in your high speed or your low speed, okay. it's going to yank it right off and pull everything apart. As long as you're putting it on all as one unit, you don't need the floss. Okay. okay? Because if this breaks in half, where is it? It's Inside or? Bio. That's right. Okay. So you don't need that. Okay. Uh, mostly high speed. high speed. If you use a low speed, you're totally in enamel, 
and you're going to be sitting there grinding and grinding. It's not going to cut it, okay. and it's going to tend to skate on you, and it's not going to cut where you want it to cut. Okay. Where just a touch with the high speed will okay. do it for you. Okay. Um, there's going to be a. There's also going to be a uh, reverse taper on that too. We'll yeah, the buckle. There. Because mm -hmm. of the buckle. Yeah. No, I agree with you. And the lingual is going to come out. Pretty much straight. Okay, Bob. What do you got? Uh, casting check on the uh, post and core, and the die check on the. Uh, Oh, okay. I found that um, I had a, there was a little bit of a spur right at the end of the post. So okay. I, to get to the I didn't want to risk fracturing the tooth when I see Exactly. It. You always, before you try these rascals in, you want to make sure that you have absolutely no flash at all. Now, because you're using the custom post, Again, remember, even before you go in for the tooth for the first time, you're going to want to take a, a disc, okay, or and even light, lightly round all these radiuses, okay? okay? Because that's the most parallel part of the whole thing. Okay. And if you've got an uneven expansion, boom, more than likely that's where it's going to occur. A little burrs and flakes, you know, because okay. as you centrifuge the gold in, all right, that's probably the maximum stress area, you know, you're throwing a bullet right, right, right at that. the end. Okay, so if you have any weakness in the investment at all, you're liable to get little spurs at that point. Okay. So you go on through okay. with a disc, round that off. Okay. Might as well, because you know you're going to have to do it anyway. Right, I'm going to put a, uh, kind of a bevel on it. Uh, just a flat face, okay. uh, a facet. Do I still want to bevel the, the very end of it? In, uh, in the manual, I mentioned to put a, a bevel on it. Do mm -hmm. I want to do that? Still oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You know, with the disc, okay, you want to go all the way around this thing. Okay. In addition to that, put, put the flat. you'll also want to put a flat face on one side of it. And that's just a vent for the cement. Okay. So that as you're cementing this, okay, into the tooth, uh -huh. you're going to have tremendous hydrostatic forces generated. If there's any weakness in the tooth, you can literally fracture a root from the force if you don't allow a vent area for the cement to move Exactly. Up. Okay? okay. Great. So you want to do that pretty much even before you go to the tooth for the first time. Okay. Okay? So I, I okay. Oh, okay. Here's a bridge. Nice looking six unit anterior bridge. It was in three years and it's a total failure. It came oh, loose. Oh my gosh. Look at the buttons, they splintered together on there, and everything came loose because it's over tape with no single pin. Was it done here? No. No? Okay. No. We have to put that on tape, but it wasn't no. done here. Yeah, it wasn't done here. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a beautiful bridge, though. It's beautiful. The yes. aesthetics is nice, yes. and this here looked good in the mouth. That yeah. matched the ginger, but very nice. Except the whole, the margins are all. Well, why don't, you know, can we get some pictures of that? Can you, sure. uh, the, does it show that the abutment teeth are, uh, sure. are tapered? Why don't sure. we get a picture of that? And that would be good to show the students, too, sure. the, the beautiful result, but then. Yeah. That it, it yeah, without a good foundation. Okay, twice. good. Then the other thing was on yesterday that I wanted to talk to you without the patient. Remember I made the note on there, on the card that said slightly wide mm -hmm. and put an S? Okay, or, or what was it? No, a little more taken away on the inside of that composite. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I did that, you know, and that's why we use the RSM so the patient doesn't know what we're saying. Mm -hmm. And I did that so that I wouldn't say in front of the patient that you cut it slightly large. And then you looked right up at me with the patient oh, sitting there yeah. and said, gee, where did I cut that slightly large? Oh, you know, okay. uh, just be a little more selective of how you're trying to say it because, you know, you it wasn't a problem particularly, right. but it was a little bigger axially than it needed to be. Right. And he doesn't need to know that. And you could have said, uh, well, show me that area or mm -hmm. something, but think before you speak, that's all. And that's in your own office, you know, right. with an assistant or whatever. You have to be a little selective, you know, oops, you never say anymore. Right. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have done that, you know. Right. <laughs> Any of those things, and they have to learn that too, you know. So yeah. that was the only thing. I was just so surprised. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, mean, I just, yeah. I thought I just, everything was, I, I, I just so pretty yeah. surprised. So. Well, it was yeah, just I, because it didn't even really show at the DEJ. Mm -hmm. And if it did, it could have been a dimple mm -hmm. in on that wall. Right. 
rather than the entire wall being leveled to okay. that. That was all. And so, yeah. you know, an S, is, an S is still a B, okay? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't bad, but it could have been a little more minimal. That's okay. all. Okay. Okay. That was no, all. I'll watch what I say. Okay. <laughs> Extra careful. Nice. Okay. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.